Hey, this is Joey from Verta Health. Welcome to another Figma tutorial. In this video, we'll be using the following skills to build a website navigation bar with a drop down menu text tool and fonts, components, including instance swapping, constraints, the color picker, layout grids, and prototyping. If you're not familiar with these features, or if you just need a refresher, be sure to check out our other videos. A common question from new designers is asking how to build drop down menus inside of Figma. In this tutorial, we're going to cover exactly how to do this by recreating the Verta Health navigation bar. First, we need the main navigation element that belongs to our navigation bar. Some of these elements will expand with the drop-down menu. Next, we'll need the actual menu part of the drop-down menu. However, this is actually made up of multiple smaller elements. We'll call these smaller elements list items. Lastly, we'll also want to consider the different states of our elements. We can see that the first item has a white bar at the top indicating an active state. Then we have two other versions of these elements, one that contains a small down arrow indicating that there is a drop-down available, and another without this. With the menu open or expanded, we can hover over one of the list items to see the hover state. Now that we've broken our menu down into smaller consumable elements, let's bring in some screenshots of the current homepage to use as references and for color picking. Let's start designing. We're building a minimal navigation bar, so we'll start with some simple text elements. Let's open the text tool and click and drag to draw out a text element and add some generic label text. Next, let's clean this up by adjusting its properties, including dimensions, typeface, size, alignment, and more. Our navigation bar will have multiple categories within it, meaning we'll want to reuse this text box we just created. So let's go ahead and make it into a component and then rename it to nav item. Our component's frame is currently toggled to not be visible but the light text is a bit difficult to read, so let's darken our component's frame to help out a bit. We'll change this back a little later. With our text box now a component, we'll adjust the inner text element again. We want to build some padding, or space between the text element and its containing frame, into the bounds of our component. Let's remove 16 pixels from each of the left and the right sides of the text element, and 15 pixels from the top and the bottom. Next, we'll add two elements to help us build out our states we identified earlier. We've already created the first default state, but now we have two more, active and dropdown. Let's add a small white bar to the top of our element for the active state. Next, we'll make a small down arrow for the dropdown state by creating a triangle from the polygon tool, and then using the shortcut Shift V to flip it vertically. Now that we've included all three states, we can just toggle them by toggling the visibility of the extra layers. When building components, it's important to think about how they will be used in the future. For something like this menu element, it is possible that we may have longer and shorter labels. In order to preserve the padding we just added to the component, let's set the constraints of our text element to left and right and center. We'll also set the constraints of our drop-down arrow to right and center and the constraints of the active bar to left and right and top. Since we've done that, if we have a nav item with a long label, we can easily resize the component to contain it. Let's build the main navigation bar by duplicating this master component to create an instance, and then duplicate the instance to create more copies. We can then apply text overrides to the labels, resize them as required, and then we'll go into the menu and use Pack Horizontally to ensure that they are all aligned perfectly. With all of these instances selected, let's nest them inside another component by clicking Create Component and name it Navigation Menu. Now that we've finished building our navigation bar, let's move on to the drop-down menu. Let's build our list item component in a similar way to our original component. Create a text layer with a label, Turn it into a component and rename it to list item slash default. Modify the properties similar to how we did for the navigation bar, and set our constraints. However, for these, we want to ensure that we have a white background. We mentioned earlier that we wanted to have two states for the list item component, but we're going to take a different approach to creating these. We'll start by creating an instance of our component. Next, we'll change the text color to white, and then change the background frame color to a blue. Let's use the eyedropper tool to pick these colors from our referenced image.
This looks pretty good, but we have a problem. Right now, this is only an instance of our original component, but we want it to be a separate master component. We can fix this by first breaking the instance, which will convert it into a frame. Then, we can make it a master component again and rename it to list item slash hover. You may wonder, why did we create these two states as two separate components rather than a single component? We did this because the difference between the default and hover states include changing the text color, which would require us to have multiple text layers to maintain, one blue, one white. If we make two components, we can use instance swapping to preserve the text overrides. But in order for text overrides to work, we need to rename the text layer in the Layers panel so that the name is always consistent across all instances. If you're still confused, don't worry, we'll demonstrate this later. We can now use our list item components to start building our drop-down menu. Before we do that, let's head back to the Verta Health website. We can see that there are two different drop-down menus, how it works with five list items, and partner with us with only two. How do we build a single drop-down menu component that can solve for having a variable number of list items? Let's give it a shot. We'll create a list of our components. Since list item slash default is our default state, or the state that appears most frequently, we'll only use those for now. First, we'll hold down Alt Option and click and drag to create an instance below. Second, we can use the keyboard shortcut Command D to duplicate the instance multiple times while maintaining the same distance. We'll create more duplicates than we think we'll need. Third, we'll click and drag to select all of the instances and then use Pack Vertically to align everything. Fourth, we'll create a new component from this list and name it Dropdown Menu. Fifth, we want to change the constraints of each of the list item elements to change how they behave as we edit the drop-down menu component. Right now, if we try and resize the menu, our list items become distorted. We can select all of the items and change their constraints to left and right and top. Now when we resize the menu from the bottom, our list items are no longer distorted. Lastly, we'll change the clipping behavior of our drop-down menu by clicking Clip Content from the Properties panel. This hides all of the list items at the bottom, which allows us to customize the length of all of our drop-down menus. We're almost done, but there's one more problem I see here. As we resize this component to add additional list items, it becomes difficult to determine exactly where we should stop resizing. If we make it too small, then the last list item won't have enough white space on the bottom. If we make it too large, then it will have too much white space. We want to make sure that we will always have precise designs, so we're going to solve this by using a layout grid. We want this to apply to each of our list item components, so we're going to apply it to our master component. With our master selected, we'll go into the properties panel and add a layout grid by clicking the plus icon. Because our component will be organized in rows that are stacked and resized vertically, we'll change our layout grid type from grid to rows. Next, we'll be resizing from the bottom, so we want our grid to be aligned to the top, because that will be static. I think that it could be helpful to have a line that also shows us the center of the list items, not just its top and bottom boundaries, so let's change the count to 3. We know that this component has a height of 70, so let's divide that in half for our height value. 70 is an easy number to divide in half, however, if you find yourself doing complex calculations, you can also type equations in this field. We'll type 70 slash 2, telling Figma to divide 70 by 2 to give us our desired value of 35. Lastly, we'll change the gutter to zero. Let's go back to our drop-down menu component and see how we did. Each nested instance in our component has our layout grid applied, and if we resize it, we can perfectly align to the grid lines and ensure that we always have consistent white space. And that's how you build a flexible drop-down component that's ready to be published to your team's design system. Now it's time to put it all together. I have a screenshot of the Verta Health homepage here without the navigation bar, so we can build on top of it and see how we did. First, let's drag our navigation menu component from the Components tab and place it near the top of the page. We still have a dark gray background on this component. Let's go to the master component and toggle the parent frame's visibility to hide this. We also want to simulate the behavior of expanding and collapsing the drop-down menu, so we'll use prototyping for that. In order to prototype, we need to make sure that our screen is wrapped inside of a frame. We can select all of our layers and use the shortcut Command-Option-G to frame the selection, and we can see that we now have a frame in the Layers panel. To continue, we'll duplicate the frame so we can build a version with the menu expanded. We can return to the Components tab and drag in an instance of our drop-down menu component. The menu item, how it works, has five list items on the website, so let's resize ours and change the labels to match. This looks great! 
Let's add one more screen to show the hover state by duplicating this frame and then using instance swapping from the components tab to pull in a copy of our list item slash hover component. If we hold down option and command as we release the instance over the component we'd like to swap, we'll automatically swap the states. Notice how the list item still says testimonials and doesn't just have a generic label? This is what we meant by preserving overrides earlier in the video. The last thing we need to do is hook these pages together through prototyping. We'll click the prototype tab at the top of the properties panel to enter prototype mode. Then we'll start linking our screens together so that when the user clicks on how it works, they'll be sent to the screen with the expanded drop-down menu. Just a few more connections and we're ready to go. With all of our frames connected, let's preview our prototype and presentation view. Let's review what we've learned today. It can be helpful to have reference images and screenshots inside of your Figma file, especially when picking colors. When building complex elements, try breaking them down into subcomponents to make tasks more approachable. Consider the desired behavior of your components and make sure that your constraints are set appropriately. As long as your text layers have the same name, text overrides will be preserved when you swap instances. Layout grids can help you design precisely. 